Door is open for questions. I see already one there. And the next one will be there. Thanks, yeah, very nice. I have two questions. One is, I mean, ROA is a tricky measure of, of riskiness. I mean, your you tr um, question is, in fact, in particular, I would think there is some delay, no? I mean, you would, uh, you would detect riskiness from ROA only after a lag, and the question is, do you, you didn't report that lag. Maybe you did it, or would, would it, how, would it, uh, how would that change if you put in the lag um, that would interpret this? Second question is, I mean, you seem to indicate that uh, more risk-taking is, is problematic or bad, um, at least sort of, um, some, some of some of the remarks you made could be interpreted that way. Um, my impression would be that possibly risk-taking was far too low before uh, in the Eurozone at least, and so um, this was a beneficial effect, bringing this up to, uh, to higher risk-taking levels on the side of the commercial banks. So is there anything in terms of welfare one could say? Thank you. So the next question. All right. Um, so in, uh, you show that uh, institutions that rely a lot on deposit uh, took more risk. Alternatively, they could have changed their um, funding structure. So in reality, is the funding structure so sticky? So it, it doesn't change much? Thank you. There's a question there at the end of... Uh yeah, I think uh, uh, in general, the deposit rates are relatively low and they vary less than, uh, in uh, than other market rates. There's evidence on that. So you would expect at other times someone else to be reshifting if this sort of charter value was so strong. Seems a bit, um, bit uh, hard to quite interpret that way. But there is also an alternative interpretation, which is uh, high quality borrowers do care about the health of their lender. And there is evidence that they switch. So it might very much be a credit demand side that uh, the one they can afford to switch to to better banks. And then you have, uh, you're left with uh, the other loans. Thank you. Any other questions? I propose you start by answering these and then we see if there are more questions. And I would also encourage, in case there is anything between the two of you, to be clarified or, or asked to, <laughs> to take it up on this okay. occasion. So first of all, Roger, thanks a lot for the very interesting uh, discussion. Let me uh, first get back to the two main points in your uh, discussion. So first of all, on the behavior of, of loan officers in the, in the six month uh, period. Let me uh, uh, just clarify two things. So for uh, the main analysis in the paper, we are effectively looking at a one year and a half uh, period. So June 2014 to the end of 2015, a period over which uh, rates are, um, are, are negative uh, dur during the whole uh, period. But even having said that, I, I fully agree that it's, it's very interesting to further think about these, these mechanisms inter internally in the within banks, how this uh, how this exactly is uh, is happening? Because it's ve that's very important in order to make sure that this uh, the setup we have is a is a realistic one in the in the end. And then on the on the relativeness of the effect, so uh, on the 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 loan growth. So if you would look at the aggregate uh, levels, indeed uh, lending in the eurozone. Uh, since 2014, uh, mid 2014 has uh, effectively uh, picked up. But what we're uh, actually really, what we're really looking at in this paper, and like I tried to stress during the presentation, is that it's always very important to keep in the back of your mind when when reading these results. Is that we're looking at relative effects of high versus low uh, deposit banks, which makes it hard to make this yeah. type of um, absolute uh, what's your gut statements. What's your gut feeling uh, for the aggregate? Uh, well. In aggregate, uh, lending is going is going up over over this period, but less so for the high deposit banks. That's at least what we uh, what we observe in the in the data there. Um, then for the um, uh, question on uh, return on assets, so uh, we so the the risk measure in our main analysis uh, is the so the standard deviation of the return uh, on assets, and it's taken over a five year period before the loan is being granted. So it's, re it's really already a, um, an ex-ante measure of, of riskiness, so a, an, a measure that the bank should also be able to observe when effectively granting the loan, and that's uh, why we take this as our, as our main, uh, main proxy of riskiness. 
And throughout the paper, we also have a, a whole number of alternative, alternative risk measures for, uh, for further robustness on uh, whether or not the risk taking is bad. Well, uh, I think all our results in, in some way show that there's, there's indeed also a bright side that uh, there's new lending going to borrowers that were not able to get a loan before in the syndicated loan market that we are, uh, that we are studying. So this might indeed indicate that um, there might, might have been uh, so that that there's a, a reduction in uh, in credit constraints for these uh, for these firms. Uh, then there was a question on the um, uh, whether the, the funding structure is stable over time. So that seems to be very stable for the for the banks in our sam sample over time. There's very little. Um, so when banks have a really high deposit ratio, they tend to have this that for a prolonged period over time. So this really seemed to be some kind of a business model choice of uh, of the bank, and then. Um, the last question of Enrico on the uh, on the matching between uh, borrowers and, and banks that's indeed a very um, a very good comment. I would have to think about ways uh, how we could how we could deal with this in the in the paper. But indeed, it, it might be that there's some concern from the borrower side about the quality of the bank as well. Although I would think that that's something that's already plays in the period before that that's not necessarily r strongly related to. Uh, negative rates, but really something that's already happening over the prolonged period that that rates were uh, were low. But uh, thanks a lot for the comment. Thank you. And Walter, would you have something to add? Yeah. yeah happy. <laughs> One more question. Here in the front, first line, first row. Sorry, not line. <laughs> thanks. You may have given the answer, but I didn't hear it. If you did which is what happened to the profit rates of the banks as a function of their deposit ratio, deposit funding ratio, do we know? Uh, so there, so initially you see a, a limited uh, effect there, but if you, uh, as time goes by and by the end of our sample, you do also see a gap ho opening up there for the, uh, so the, high, the higher deposit banks seeing a slight, uh, slight reduction there compared to the, to the low deposit banks. Thank you very much to the audience for the nice question, and in particular to the presenter and discussion. It was a real discussion, challenging, and I've learned a lot, at least for myself. We are closing right on time for lunch. Thank you, and uh, you are back in an hour, I understand.